It's a new year, it's a new dawn, it's a new start for Stews. And we're feeling good. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new year and a brand new Is It Fast Live, the weekly show where we bring you the latest from the world of cars, motorsport, and things that go a little bit too quick for comfort. We have been renewed for another year, mainly because I'm the commissioning editor. And happy Hugmanay to the man with the mostest. Arthur Stu also had his contract renewed for 2022. How are you, mate? I'm as shocked as you are. Uh, <laughs> I understand the um, the list of applicants was one, um, <laughs> but still it wasn't looking in my favour for quite a lot of it. So I'm just delighted to be back. Thank you very much, Stu. And I hope you had a good festive period there, mate. Yes, yes. It was very lovely, thank you. Uh, I trust yours was similarly festive and lovely. Uh, it didn't snow, but no. uh, that 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 is neither here nor there. Uh, but we are back with a brand new, I say in inverted commas, a brand new show. Uh, but the format is very, very similar. We're coming to you live 7 o'clock GMT from the little southeast corner of the United Kingdom, uh, where we handpick the latest car and motorsport news to bring you the motor aficionado that is our ever-expanding audience. Mm. So first of all, thank you very much for being with us for another year. It means an awful lot. If you are with us and you're joining us on this journey, make yourself known. Speak to us in the comments. Uh, and if you are watching and you are speaking to us in the comments, then there is a very good chance you're going, going to want to know what we're talking about this evening. Uh, and I know it's I do. Yeah, I know, because I, I haven't told you yet. Uh, so everything is off the cuff. No scripts here, my dears. Oh. Uh, so today, uh, because it is the beginning of the brand new year, the year of 2022, uh, we are quickly going through our top uh, five cars that we are looking forward to coming out this year, or at least making an appearance outside of their covers so that we can have a better chance of knowing whether we want to order one or not. It is January, and that means it is time for my favourite motorsport championship of the year. Dakar is back for uh, another year. Uh, we chat about the Tesla 3 and what is making it so popular. Uh, we, of course, have our TikTok segment where we chat about watches. So stay tuned for that. That is going to be uh, a quick whip through uh, the world of watches. Uh, it is a brand new year, which means there is a lot of motorsport to be had. And we are bringing you the important dates for your diary while also giving you a little bit of inf information uh, about the upcoming motorsport uh, calendar for this year. And in Finland, a geezer's gone mental. We're finishing on that. Uh, something oh, probably finish <laughs> Oh, I like that. Do you know well, that? Then. Yeah, yeah. I'll try that. Are, are, are there more puns later to do with this? I hope. Uh, I'm making my New Year's resolution was to be more punny. Oh, so fantastic! I know, which means I'm going to have to drop in and drop out uh, probably more real world words and sentences from my vocabulary, and I'll just start talking like some sort of victim. Uh, so I thought that was it, my role. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are the designated victim. Uh, but yeah. before we get ourselves too in trouble ahead of the year, uh, there is an awful lot to go through, but it's all very exciting, isn't it? Can't, can't wait. Yeah, some, <laughs> some amount of cars are going to be launched this year. Some of our favorite driving championships are back. Some new things are coming into the fold. Even more exciting. We're seeing... Basically, the virtual worlds, the real worlds, the air, the skies, the water, nothing is stopping us here. It's fantastic. There's so much that we're going to have all, to talk about. All melding together, and it's all going to be coming to your eyes and ears on Is It Fast, as we have, uh, I think, something like 100 programs plus this year. In fact, if you add it all up, there's going to be about 400 separate things that you could watch, listen to, and read uh, on Is It Fast, either online or website see us at some sort of event all being well uh, or if you're just on a bus a train a plane or an automobile you can listen to us through 
your ear holes, uh, which I know uh, everybody's looking forward to hugely. Uh, so without further ado, it is the beginning of a new year, uh, which means all the time that we spend lusting after the newest cars that are coming to oh. market has finally come to. So in the year of 2022, what cars are we excited about at Is It Fast? Allow me to start with the following. Uh, we have a bit of a soft spot for Italian cars that don't work so good uh, most of the time. Uh, and in 2022... But it's got a real new, pretty mouth. It's got a real pretty mouth. Uh, the Maserati Grand Turismo is promised to have its unveiling. Uh, so Maserati... Uh, they are famed for making cars that are beautiful, that go quickly, but frankly, sometimes break down. Uh, 2022 is the year that they're going to bring us the new Gran Turismo. The Gran Turismo that was around for about 12 years was discontinued last year. Uh, we've seen it only undercover, out and about. Uh, Autocar brought these images to the fold a little while ago. Uh, the V8 engine of the... Uh, Maserati Gran Turismo looks like it's going to be going to be replaced with a V6 power unit. It's just the way the world is going. I don't have a problem with it per se, uh, but also Maserati promising that they're going to go all electric uh, in the very near future, both with the Gran Turismo uh, that is going to be revealed this year and also their MC20, which frankly is a very expensive motor car. Uh, I don't know how they're selling after they came out last year. But car number one that we are excited about is the brand new Maserati Gran Turismo being unveiled. Uh, we all know how much we love those. What do we think? Mazar? Very much so. Um, we, we are both suckers for the Maserati. Somewhere between uh, a Grand Tourer and a sports car for me, still manages to impress despite being about 10 years old and a little bit outdated like some people have come away and said this is painfully outdated compared to some of the modern stuff out there but for me the sleek italian design for me just masks the weight and size issues that it can have pretty well it's still a car that performs well and it's going to put a smile on your face and it's going to turn heads if, if you drive past someone in it full yeah. stop it's a winner yeah exactly the the, the old gran turismo definitely was showing its age so when they've just you know the fact they've discontinued it I don't know, three months ago, probably makes sense. So yeah, the new one is going to be awesome. Uh, now, for everyone that moans about the... <laughs> everyone moans about the new Land Rover Defender being uh, a little bit too premium, a little bit too mm. posh, a little bit too comfortable. Don't worry, because 2022 is the year that the Ineos Grenadier is going to be yours apparently. Uh, £48,000, you can bring a hose inside and hose it down. Uh, it is brought to us by the UK's wealthiest man, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. He is the guy behind the company Ineos. Uh, you might see them plastered all over F1 cars. You might also see them uh, on a bike team. They have a bike, like a cycling team called the Ineos Grenadiers. Uh, he is also the owner of Nice Football Club, uh, but Ineos uh, he made all his money from chemicals, basically. But this is the Ineos Grenadier, four-wheel drive, very utilitarian. Uh, we've already had road tests in it and all that kind of thing, and off-roading tests, and it looks pretty good. Uh, but this is the year that you'll be able to order and get one delivered, apparently. So the Defender that's more Defender than the Defender is going to be this year. Cool, right? I mean, it's all right. <laughs> Very much so. Compared to this, you've got to call the Defender uh, the Grenadier Light with Lemon or something like that. This is absolutely <laughs> perfect um, for what you're looking to do for this type of thing. The inside of it is a little bit disappointing. It kind of looks like a kid's drawing with 1980s Arnie buttons uh, inside. Everybody get to the Grenadier. Um, but you're looking at a 4 before that's going to go on sale. It is an all-terrain vehicle for around about, they're saying, Forty-eight thousand pounds as a two-seater commercial version. If mm -hmm. that's the actual price, this is going to sell really well. You might not see many on the roads unless you're around farmland. But yeah, yeah th this is something that God, I'd love to get my hands on. I, di I didn't get my um, my free cars that I wanted from Santa. Uh, one of which was a Hummer. I think I would yes. take this in its place. Um, yeah, it's it's quite it's grown on me actually. The Ineos Grenadier and they started kind of showing 
prototypes about 18 months ago. Then they revealed the whole thing late in 2021. Uh, and the fact that we're going to see them on the road in 2022, uh, I think, is quite exciting. Um, I think they've made a good car, if I'm honest. I think I think that's fair play because it got slated early doors. Um, mm. So, yes, the Ineos Grenadier, we're excited about that in 2022. A defender that isn't a defender. They're going to hate me for saying that. Uh, but there we go. Uh, the next car that we are excited about in uh, 2022 is uh, it's an electric car. It's called the Lucid Air. It is an American car. Uh, it is, uh, they call it the, an electric performance saloon, which is actually a term that seems to be coming along uh, quite a bit at the moment. They did actually start manufacturing prototypes of this September, October 2021. Uh, it's going to be made in Arizona. Don't know if that's a material fact. I, I, what, tell us in the comments what else comes out of Arizona uh, that is good. Uh, it's going to have 1,065 brake horsepower and a claimed maximum range of more than 500 miles. Uh, I think it's gorgeous. And I'm looking forward to working versions, basically a real version of this being out and about in 2022. They have said that this is coming to the UK. Uh, so the Lucid Air, that's a car, right? That is a that is a car you can get behind. This is beautiful. Uh, this is the Tesla Model S rival, priced around the £40,000 uh, pound mark. Apparently, Lucid are claiming they've already taken 13,000 reservations uh, on it. It's All certainly right. got a better look than a Tesla. Sorry, Tesla guys out there. Uh, the interior <laughs> looks better. Um, it's better con con conceived even. Uh, the only real fly in the ointment for me is no outsider has had the test drive of this. Um, basically, you're going to have to buy this car and mm -hmm. then see if you like it and drive it. Um the design is absolutely beautiful, though. I love that back wing. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. But I'd love to know the cost of replacing the windscreen slash roof if a little stone bounces up from a truck in front of you. Yeah. Because um, that is a that's a long way back there. It is. <laughs> I um I love it. I I mean I I'm a sucker for these kind of things anyway. Uh, I'm very excited to see. Do they have a 14 day cooling off period if they can't give you a chance to drive it? Uh, before it deliver it's delivered uh, it probably won't come to the uk for another couple of years will it let's be honest but it will hit roads somewhere probably bigger journalists than i and <laughs> we'll end up driving this this year somewhere in the us um, but if lucid if you're watching and you want to fly it's probably your turn in it if you want to fly it's either one of us to the us uh, to give this a go um then we will do uh, fair play on aesthetics alone uh yeah I, I think this is very exciting this year. Um, so that's going to be cool. Uh, we carry on our list of things, our list of cars that we're excited about in 2022. Um, Fisker. Mm. Fisker has been around for a while. <laughs> Ofcom, if you're listening. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Fisker has been a car designer for a while. Uh, you might even tell us some of the famous cars that he's designed. Um, I think he designed... I hope that wasn't directed at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, uh, he has um, designed cars like the BMW Z8, the Aston Martin DB9, the Aston Martin V8, uh, mm. Vantage. So Henrik Fisker, who is now the CEO and founder of Fisker, um knows his way around a car uh, i think it's fair to say um he's very very good at it and fisker then have gone on founded by henrik fisker uh to do electric cars evs he had a kind of a saloon that came out a little while ago didn't really do so well um if you're familiar with the youtubing world salamandrin a massive uh huge car youtuber in the u.s uh, has got a Fisker, uh, but this is the Fisker Ocean. Um, and it's very exciting because I think, first of all, it looks the part. It's going to be made in Graz in Austria, so it might get to the UK market a bit sooner. Uh, 
It will probably arrive in the UK towards the end of 2023, but working models of this will be available uh, this year, 2022, to have a play with. It's rivaling the Audi Q4 e-tron, the BMW iX3, uh, and it's going to be kind of cheap. That's the yeah. That's the point, right? Well, yeah, UK prices haven't been confirmed, but they're ballparking between uh, 28,000 to about kind of 51, 52,000. Mm. That's not bad because this is still a nice looking SUV. It's got a much nicer dash system than the kind of god awful nothingness that you see in so many kind of cars these days. It's really nice inside. Um, as you say, kind of taking on the Audi uh, Q4 e-tron as mm-hmm. well as the BMW iX3. I got uh, the image of the silver version and it looks so much like the Robocop helmet. It is unbelievable. It really does, actually, especially from the back. Uh, yeah. So if you're listening to this rather than watching this, uh, it is. imagine your standard SUV has plowed into Robocop's head, uh, but not in a bad way. I think it's it's a very striking. I believe the roof has got solar panels, so it charges oh. as it drives. I don't know if that's true, uh, but it kind of makes sense to me if it is true. Um, it's a very very interesting thing. I've been watching the uh, the development of Fisker over the last two or three years really keenly, uh, and I think someone with that pedigree in the automotive world and automotive space, uh, he was bound to get it right eventually um yeah. but it is a car i'm very excited about seeing rolling around in 2022 uh, i know it'll just be test drives i get that prototype versions i get that but it's still going to be really really cool tell us what you think so far of the list uh is anything that we've picked for this year tickling your pickle or are you just not that bothered about our list uh, or are you maybe not that intrigued by the fact that we've picked a couple of evs because if you are don't worry because the next car on our list <laughs> is <laughs> petrol powered 2022 is the year that we are going to start seeing the new bmw 2 series hit our roads uh, you've been able to order one since the end of 2021 but this year the M240i will be, in theory, on UK roads, but also they will be revealing the brand new BMW M2, which I am very, very excited about. A very close friend of mine owns the generation before this, uh, and it is possibly the best all-round well, performance coupe that I've been in for a long time. Um we don't know anything about the new M2, but it will share probably a dulled down version of the M3, current M3 generation's uh, engine. So you're looking at like 370 to 450 brake, uh, four wheel drive system with a rear wheel bias, undoubtedly. Um, the M240i, which is what you're looking at here, which looks very similar to the old two series, just slightly more angular, um, is a belter, isn't it? You know what? Punchier, sharper, sleeker. I know this is sounding a little bit like the M2's Tinder profile, but this is one hot coupe. Um, more powerful, greater torque, um, but sharp too. Um, mm-hmm. It's still um, purest for its driving car abilities. Obviously, broader spread of the characteristics, uh, greater divide between comfort and sport. But I really like what I've seen so far. Uh, the yeah. current M2, as you've said, is fantastic. So for me, it's kind of hard to see where they're going to improve this. But quite a few times um, I've been in one, I've been able to enjoy it. It's performance, it's tight chassis. Now I'm really sounding like I should be on grinder with this. But no, really looking forward to seeing it. This yeah, is really fantastic. I, I love it. Um, I When it comes to the 2 Series, I'm going to say something slightly controversial. I think the oh. M240i is the one to go for even i don't know obviously i don't know what the new generations are going to be like i'll wait until i have a go in one but the having driven an m2 the old version and being in an m240i the m2 on uk roads is just a little bit too much every single day the m240i three liter v6 it trust me it's plenty quick enough 
but it's just a little bit softer. And I don't know if it's because I'm now really getting into the into the swagger of my 30s that I just think, why do you need something so hardcore? Let alone the M2 competition. That is just a backbreaker. I mean, performance-wise, fantastic. You just don't, you can't really apply it. Wouldn't you rather a car you can use most of its performance rather than kind of, you know, a quarter of its performance? So that's, um, that is my take on the Air 2 Series, if I'm honest. Um, but if a 2 Series isn't enough for you, it's the big one this year. It's the big one. Forever, BMW fans have been waiting for an M3 Tourer. Uh, I am one of those. I... I've seen lots of conversions. I know that you can convert a lot of 320 and 330 tourers into something that is just as performance focused. But this year is the year that BMW officially give us and show us the M3 Tourer. It's going to be the first M3 Touring Estate ever. It's going to be taking on the C63 and the RS4 Avant. Uh, probably going to have a three litre twin turbo engine. We know that because... It, there's already an M3 out. Uh, 480 horsepower, we reckon. And then if you get the competition, probably 510 horsepower. Again, we know that because there's already an M3 of this generation out on the road. They reckon there's going to be a manual. Oh, That's pretty exciting. It is. Uh, and then four-wheel drive system, exactly like the M3 that we've got now, um, but you can dial it up and down. But this, I am genuinely, when they announced this in 2020, I was like, done. Go back and, and watch the Is It Fast News from, I think, September 2020 or whatever it was. I was so excited about this M3 coming out. Because I like I like, M3, I like the M products, but an M3 Tourer is what it's been missing. You've got the C63 Estate, you've got the A4 Avant, and BMW were just like, nah, forget it. No one buys them. No one buys a, a hot estate. Lies. And they've obviously woken up because this is the year we get to see this without the camouflage on. Oh, man, it's going to be sick. Yeah, I always feel a hot estate is a bit of an oxymoron, like a lead balloon or an other Stuart. Um, <laughs> but in the M3 Touring's history of 34 years, yes, older than us, um, they've never been able to produce this. And it does kind of make me wonder why they've not done it before. Um, this is going to be a lot of excitement. Can't wait to see one. Hopefully, we get to have a shorter one. As you said, uh, gearbox option is going to be likely as well for it, and an mm -hmm. option to switch to a four wheel drive version as well. Uh, yeah. In it. yeah, it's Th going to be this good. is going to be well anticipated. Yeah, I think so. The latest M3 generation, the latest M3 uh, saloon or sedan, if you're watching or listening in the United States, uh, howdy. is howdy, uh, is incredible right like it's a really good bit of kit it's completely and totally proven to be a return to form this m3 tourer when it gets revealed later on this year i think it's going to blow some cobwebs off uh, but cars that we want to see in 2022 uh i'm going to be honest not everything can be super exciting and super Aww. quick um but kia now, Kia are a company that I've oh, I've, uh, I'm, okay, I'm not going to lie. Kia are a company that I've been very interested in for the last five years. Yeah. Not so interested in ten years prior to that. But they're coming out with some corkers. They really are. The, the new Kia Sportage uh, is something that I think is going to set them apart from the other run-of-the-mill <laughs> cars out there. Yeah. And I, I don't mean that as an insult, um, but it's a fifth-generation Sportage. Uh, you can go out and order one right now, I think. Um, it's going to start at around about 25 grand for a basic petrol model with a manual gearbox. Uh, and that's a little bit more expensive, about 1,500 quid more expensive than its main rival, which is the Nissan Qashqai. Now, I'm not going to buy a Sportage, and I'm not going to buy a Qashqai. I'm not the market. However, they they sell boatloads of Sportages. Mm. And I think it's important that even if you're not into cars and your car is just a tool, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Cars are predominantly a tool. I will say that. Uh, but it's so cool that Kia have pushed the envelope from a design and aesthetic perspective, from an interior 
aesthetic and uh, standard equipment perspective, I'm really excited about the Sportage. And that's something I never thought I'd ever say, just because it looks mental. It looks like something I would draw as a seven-year-old, and that's yeah. pretty cool. For me, you kind of hit the nail on the head with it there. Kia's something we've gone from, oh yeah, it's a Kia, within the last kind of good few years, half decade to going, oh, Kia. Mm -hmm. They've really kind of turned it around. They have gone through a big brand redevelopment. But most importantly, this is now the fifth generation. So they're starting to get a lot of refinement in their cars. Um, you're getting a lot more in the way of handling precision, technology, space, and alternative styling. They're doing extremely well mm -hmm. at an extremely affordable cost. Um, for, for me, the, the glossy kind of black contrasting body trims really complete it. And it does look quite sci fi it does um, sci-fi sci-fi no i know what you mean it does um, look it does i just look don't think odd. you forget this design in a hurry and there'll be a lot of people that'll look at this and go oh wow it's a, oh it's a kia mm. yeah <laughs> and not it, in an offensive way no i know i know exactly what you mean it looks a little bit like i mean it is the cousin of the hyundai tucson so i do get that it does look a bit mm. tucson-y but at the same time i'm really impressed with kia across the board actually um and i'm really looking forward to seeing what people think of this this year and how many they sell because people need cars like this um mm. and kia have always been the sportier of that group you know hyundai were always the luxurious ones kia were always the sportier ones and that's kind of changed recently with the hyundai n performance range um so yeah very very interested to see the sportage and then lastly uh, our last car that we're interested in uh, having a go at and with <laughs> in 2022 uh, is the Vauxhall Astra, uh, known in Europe as the Opel Astra. Uh, it is included in this list uh, because I know you don't like it. Uh, so I included it primarily for that reason. But also, I'm willing to give the Vauxhall Astra another chance uh, because I drove a Vauxhall Mocha last year on test and I was really pleasantly surprised. And this is going to share the... DNA of that uh, type of feel, uh, and it's going to be modelled. It's modelled on the 308. It's part of this wider Stellantis group uh, platform. So essentially, it's it's a Peugeot underneath. Uh, I like the styling. It will probably drive quite well because they've played around with it, and you hate it, and that's why it's on my 2022 list. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if I totally and utterly hate this. Um... There's a lot going on. First impressions, it does look good. Um, and it has a lot of kind of presence for a family hatchback. Um, <laughs> front view. Go on. Or, is, you is this said me? when this got announced and we were, oh, we I can't remember what show it was. You ripped into this so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to find back, it. I'm backpedaling. Yeah, you can, you can intersplice <laughs> me going through it like a, like a hot knife through butter. Um, front view of it does look a little bit like a Mustang. I don't know if I should be impressed or offended by that. Um, the interior for it, I don't know if you've got a picture. I, and I've lost them, people. No, um, no, I've not got a picture. Professionalism not, hasn't I've got any better uh, on the Is It Fast podcast. We can all fail this. Uh, the interior, they've really just copied the um, VW Golf 8 on it. But it mm. looks a little bit like the Kia X Seed. Am I... Uh, no, nah, I mean they 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 all kind of look the same now. Yeah, family hatchbacks of a certain price and and ability. Um, awesome, good. Well, I'm glad you like it because uh, I'm quite excited <laughs> about having a go in the new Vauxhall Astra this year. Uh, not something I ever thought I'd say, but I quite like the styling and uh, I bet the performance is actually pretty okay. I also bet the Bogo standard is rubbish inside i will say that as a it caveat. will be that uh so yes the Vauxhall astra uh, a car that Stu hated when it was revealed uh now has decided it's not it's... so bad which i think is great so that's very very funny i'm going to find that clip and show <laughs> it next week i promise you that uh so uh tell us what you think what car are you excited about for 2022 there are an awful lot of cars that are going to be uh, revealed and released uh, during the course of the next 12 months. We have picked just five to get us started, but as we all know, we shall be changing our minds 
with the traffic lights as Stu has just shown there uh, but very interested to know how you all feel at home what are you looking forward to the most this year or a number of cars please do let us know remember that if you subscribe to is it fast on any of our social media channels or head to our website uh, there is a damn good chance that we will be reviewing the car that you are most interested in in 2022 and we will be able to give you a no holes barred opinion on that car which we will then change according to my co-host later see, on <laughs> see i might have just been in a really bad mood that day when i was lighting up i, I you really know. could have been oh dear uh, oh excellent so dropped, do, dropped my jam sandwich the wrong way up and that was it yeah yeah, yeah exactly but but that but that is it uh but yes the 2022 cars that we are kind of excited about the most not to mention the ferraris and all the other kind of really horrendous stuff that will be coming down the line and by horrendous i mean horrendously expensive thank you very much you've tuned into is it fast with both stewards aren't you lucky yes you are yes you are it is new PTs, mate. well yeah they're coming don't worry uh 2022 the start of a new year means that we have got a brand new dakar voila c'est le paris à dakar for those of you who don't, <laughs> for those of you that don't speak french that means voila there's the paris to dakar now of course the dakar doesn't go from paris to dakar anymore it is now being held for the third year in a row in saudi arabia now the dakar is what got me excited in motorsport in the first place uh, and it's been going for the last what, four days give or take which is quite a lot yeah. um, you've got bikes you've got ssvs cars trucks classic dakar cars so and trucks and all the rest of it so a classic um cars from the 90s early noughties all the rest of it uh, and an all-electric audi e-tron as we can see there taking place uh, taking part rather this yeah, uh, so it's proper rally raid territory. Uh, it's 8,000, 8, I'll get there in the end. It is 8,375 kilometers of incredibly tough terrain, uh, dangerous terrain. Unfortunately, drivers do get injured uh, over the course of the Dakar. It's just part of it unfortunately uh, 1065 races 578 vehicles from over 80 countries are represented uh, this year uh, as they head around saudi arabia um there's all sorts of incredible i mean i love dakar i don't see yeah. i can't understand why someone doesn't um all the contraptions are incredible you see trucks you see the huge number of, of different types of vehicle really pushing themselves to the absolute max driver and machine being pushed the absolute max uh, and there we see a classic larder uh the, <laughs> so the, i think larder uh, a french guy drove a larder to second place in 1982 uh being bared down go. by a big old truck there um at the moment as we go out live it is nasa al Atayeh, who is a legend uh, the Qatari is a legend of the Dakar world. Uh, he's a multiple Dakar champion. He's currently in a Toyota Hilux. Uh, he won Dakar in the Gen 1 version of this. He's now in a Gen 2. I think they call it a T2 version uh, now. Uh, he's leading the way. He's got a comfortable gap. Uh, I love the Dakar. I'm hugely passionate about it. Like I say, it was the Dakar that got me into motorsport in the first place. Um, and it's just cracking. You catch an hour's worth of highlights in the evening. You watch maybe two hours worth of highlights every single morning. I get up early to watch the highlights. It's really sad. Um, but parry to, parry to Dakar. But the Dakar, isn't it yeah. great? Yeah. Who doesn't love the Dakar rally? It's, it's like a really good day at the beach. It's fast, it's wild, and sand gets everywhere. Absolutely fantastic. There's over 80 countries getting represented out here. It's just really open. Um, amateurs and professionals both enter this. Uh, mm -hmm. Amateurs typically make up about 80% of their participants, yeah. which sounds wild. Like These guys are either <laughs> got to have a little bit of a screw loose, yeah. um, but there's about five different kind of competitive groups, isn't there? Uh, motorcycles, quads, yeah. uh, car classes, um, um, UTVs, 
and as well, and there's just so much of a harsh environment out there that so many manufacturers use this as a testing ground mm -hmm. and an opportunity to just show off their vehicle's durability. Um, can't think of any kind of better way to do it. And it's just absolutely fantastic um, for us as viewers. Uh, and a little bit of tradition for you. Uh, do you know that they still actually track um, the, the, the times and people's progress and things like that using hourglasses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you call an hourglass with no sand in it? A waste of time. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank that you. is actually that is that is exceptional, exceptional work. Uh, but yes, the Dakar, <laughs> thankfully, is back uh, for another year. Just a shout out to Carlos Sainz. Uh, we'll probably call him Carlos Sainz Senior now that Junior is about doing motorsport. Uh, who took a stage win in the all electric Audi e-tron. Uh, massive, massive step forward for the sport there. Very interesting to see how that develops over the next few years. Uh, and it is, um, yeah, like you say, the amateur element of it is still very much embedded in the culture of Dakar. Obviously, there are professionals. Sebastian Loeb, multiple World Rally Champion, is back again this year. Uh, we've got the Coronel twins that are, touring car drivers and, and and race winners and world champions from a number of different disciplines are back out there again this year, my mm -hmm. personal favorites. Um, and, and of course, NASA, who is just an absolute legend. But yes, the Dakar is back. I always try and draw attention to the Dakar this time of year. Uh, I do feel it's a, not as much of a United Kingdom thing. It's not massive in the UK. Uh, having grown up abroad, the Dakar was a huge part of my motorsport life. Uh, and I just want to say you should be into it. It's incredible. Obviously, I know a lot of you are. And that's that's yeah. cool. Um, but do tell us in the comments, uh, what are your favorite Dakar memories? Maybe even your favorite Dakar car? Or have you been watching the Dakar this year? Uh, and how have you found it? I think it's been brilliant. In fact, better than last year. And I can't put my finger on why. Uh, I just find it, it's just a bit, I don't know, a bit more exciting. I don't know if it's a variation in the cars and they're doing a lot more behind the scenes with the drivers and stuff, but it's really, really good. I couldn't make it last year because they didn't invite me and I unfortunately couldn't make it this year because uh, they also didn't invite me. Uh, but no. I know and people don't invite me places. It's sad. Uh, but the Dakar 2022, tell us, have you been watching it already? What Are you a Dakar fan? What are your favorite memories? And uh, do you like uh, the sand? That's not really a question but yeah. it's, it's, it's there or thereabouts because uh, it's great. It's great. There's nothing like it in the world, and I'm just so chuffed that it keeps coming back year on year. Uh, and it does rock. It does, it, yeah. It, it really does. It's really very good. It's just the distances they cover. They seem to be doing about 800 to 900 kilometers per day. Mm -hmm. That That's just mental. Really. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Over 8,000 kilometers. I think they get one rest day. In Amazing. the middle, I'll yeah, <laughs> no, nowhere near as impressive. No, I uh, know, I know, right? Nowhere near as impressive. But the Dakar 2022, tell us your thoughts right here on Is It Fast? Right here on Is It Fast? Car news now, uh, because you know, we've got to pass ourselves off as journalists in some fashion. Uh, we are waiting mm. for the official numbers, but it looks likely that the best selling. EV uh, in Europe is going to be the Tesla Model 3. Uh, it came out to great aplomb and applause because it sits in that oh so lovely C segment category of the car world. Uh, and it looks like it's going to do quite well. Uh, Tesla sold 112,687 Model 3s from January through to November. So we're just waiting for December's figures. Uh, but it doesn't look like anyone's going to catch up with them at all. Uh, the ID3 and the Zoe are kind of chomping at its heels, uh, but I think there's a fair amount of daylight between the Tesla and the Volkswagens and the Renaults, uh, which is fair enough. It's an interesting bit of consumer news. Uh, if you are thinking of buying a Tesla 3, then I would implore you to subscribe to Is It Fast because we know someone personally who mm. has purchased a Tesla 3 and gone through the process. And we are going to be sharing that process and his thoughts on the Tesla 3 and what Tesla 3 ownership is really like on a special show in the next week 
or so. Uh, he got rid of a combustion engine car. I shan't reveal it. It was an interesting car. It was. Uh, it was. Um, and replaced it with a Tesla 3. So we're going to be bringing you what it's like to order a Tesla 3, spec a Tesla 3, get a Tesla 3 delivered, and uh, then what it's like subsequently to live with a Tesla 3. Uh, and he is brutally honest about it. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But Stu, the Tesla 3, the most popular EV in Europe over the last 12 months, it looks like. Interesting, right? It makes a lot of sense. It's quick, it's high spec, it's got a long range on it, and it's starting about uh, £37,000 now. Mm -hmm. Now, say what you want about the Teslas, but the second-hand price indicates that it's better than a Porsche, um, and these are the kind of figures for uh, holding its value that BMW could only dream about. Go on the website <laughs> and get a second-hand one below um, 40000 despite the new ones only really costing a couple of grand more. Yeah. Um. On them, so it is quite impressive. Um. There's obviously a few people out there that are saying, um, Tesla could do so much in Europe if it was offering, say, for example, a wagon version of the Model Three. Um. If they would release the much weighted hatchback. Um. If there was like more kind of down to earth mm. kind of cockpit type things uh, available, uh, autopilot. I know is something that a lot of people are wanting from them as well. But brand recognition or fashion or not. Tesla has a spectacular production volume at the end of quarter four last year and probably gigantic sales in December. And it's not going to slow down, let's be honest. Um, these things agreed. are here to stay. Yeah, agreed. Um, I'm a little surprised that Tesla sells so many because I just don't. My problem is I judge Tesla from four years ago. Mm. They're probably much better now. I've no... But it, it left such a bad taste in my mouth that i wasn't that interested in getting back into one um for any reason really uh, i'm not anti-ev i'm just not pro tesla uh but we shall see in our tesla 3 special with a man that we know that's bought one uh if he can change anybody's mind and do you know what this i'll probably try and nick really it weird yeah I, I can't make up my mind if this is good or bad because we're actually going to have somebody who's actually sat in one of the cars that we're talking about normally we just kind of look at pictures of them and go yeah that's nice let's talk about that. <laughs> yes um, yeah we we talk about them more than we road test them but yeah it will be interesting but if you're thinking of getting a tesla 3 uh then make sure that you subscribe to is it fast so that you can watch uh, as we discuss with a tesla 3 owner the process, what it's been like, what it's like to live with, uh, the trials and tribulations of getting himself into a Tesla 3. Uh, and then later on in the year, when I convince him that I can nick it, we're going to take it for a spin. And we probably won't crash it, but I can't promise anything. Uh, so there we go. The Tesla 3, the most consumed EV in Europe. What time is it? It's my favorite time. And it's the first time of 2022. Yeah. It's time for I, TikTok. Yay. It's time for TikTok. So we try to think of ourselves as trend setters here at mm. Is It Fast? Because every single week we trawl the internet to find the best in wrist wearing fashion to share with you, our esteemed audiences. Uh, now, some of you may have heard of a small publication called the GQ magazine. They are uh, both uh, paperback and online. Uh, but they have put together a list, quite a lengthy list, actually, uh, of 114 watches and watch brands that you should be looking out for for 2022. Now, I don't know if this is factually correct, but some of the watches and watch brands that we've been speaking about at length in 2021 have made the GQ watch list uh, so i'm not saying that we're massively influential in the watch world i'm just saying we're pretty much always right uh if you want to put a number on it five percent of the watch brands that we spoke about last year have made the gq list so i'll take that uh yeah. but we have picked five watch brands slash models from the 114 that gq shared to share with you uh and it was Stu. <laughs> This is this is Stu's choices. I, I I asked him to make a choice, and then I didn't. I didn't. Uh, oh, we're so, gonna... so we're only getting my five. We're not getting any yeah. from you. No, okay, no I, just, I just thought yours were the educated, educated choices. Uh, so we picked five of the watches that we like the most off of the GQ list, and we start with Atelier Jalapert. 
I am delighted that you pronounced that. Uh, I was struggling how I was going to tackle this one. Yes, uh, Belgian watch manufacturer. Um, absolutely beautiful. And it is the one that you're seeing on the screen right now. Um, this kind of brushed silver uh, face on it um, apparently it comes from the bonnet of an Aston Martin DB5 uh, as yes. well. Always a fan of a watch that has the day of the week on it. Something I definitely could have used over the festive period. Uh, <laughs> constantly uh, looking at uh, my, my partner and asking what day is it. Uh, mm -hmm. felt a little bit like Robin Williams and Jumanji. Um, this is just absolutely beautiful, though. Um, I love where the um, um, the the hands are for it. Um, giving a little bit of this kind of brushed and chrome cross check uh, look on it as well. Just a really really nice watch, and only I say only seven hundred pounds. Yes, very interesting. Uh, the fact that the face is made from an Aston Martin DB5 bonnet. Uh, very interested in that. Very good value. I believe they're only making 600 of these. Ah, so move quick. I believe. Uh, so some of them have been sold out because there's a range of these. Some of them have got the day on it. Some of them don't have the day on it. They all have the date on them. Uh, but they have, and this is from their website, they have secured another Aston Martin DB5 bonnet <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in which to do this. Um, I think this is a fantastic timepiece. And yes. thank you very much for picking it from the GQ list of 114 for us on TikTok. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the very rare times where we both agree on a watch. Uh, so. I, I will say, and going through the completely random number of 114, mm -hmm. um, I thought, oh, this would be easy, pick five. My first run through got about 23. Oh, mate, and it's so it was, hard. Yeah, just kind of taking a note of the, the number of the, the watch I wanted to kind of say, oh, yeah, this is a nice one. Oh, this is a nice one. This is a nice one. <laughs> I better be hopeful I never win the lottery because I yeah. think I will just blow it all on watches. Yeah, yes. it's, a t it's a tough one. Um, but we shall motor through these. Uh, we won't spend too much time on your second choice, which is Breitling. Uh, so Breitling, uh, was it the Top America or whatever yes. it was called? It was, yes. It's like deja vu all over again. Yeah, this was, this was one of the on. ones we picked. So. Yep, this is part of the classic car squad. Uh, there was a red and black version one for uh, the Chevy, a green and brown one for the Ford Mustang, and this is the blue version for the Shelby Cobra. That was very, it. very nice watch. Um, I don't often go for Breitlings. Uh, I sometimes find them too busy. But um, when car and watch combine, we've all seen some absolute crashes on it these are not uh, falling into that category um four thousand three hundred and sixty pounds for one mm, though so i might need to dig a bit deep or say no to it like she just has but very very nice timepiece and and we're playing fantasy here i'm, I'm just yeah. picking five watches so yeah no very very cool uh this one you are wrong this is the <laughs> this is the quorum uh now it's an interesting company with an interesting story that i will admit Hmm. Um, and because I hate this watch, I'm going to harry us through this because we're running out of time. But it's got an luminescent skull on it. Yeah, they're making eighty-eight of them, and they're going for two thousand nine hundred quid. And on my notes, I have written here the word "wrong," <laughs> and that's it. That's all <laughs> I've got. Why have you um, picked this utter piece of rubbish, please? Um, I'm the wannabe golf kid that never grew up, so clearly you just don't understand me. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there designer uh, Severin Wunderman, uh, if I'm pronouncing that uh, incorrectly, I do apologize uh, to the company and, of course, his family. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2008, but his spirit lives on in this design. It's got a brilliant bubble, and it's the, the x-ray containing the skull, and it's got this luminescent coating, so it lights up in an eerie kind of green after dark. This is quite cool. I will 100% agree I'm not going to be spending 3,000 quid on this watch. It, no. It's just something I saw and I thought, that's really <laughs> cool. I like it. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I probably wouldn't wear this to hang around on Coburn Street in Edinburgh. One, nah. because I'm well into my 30s now and I'd probably get arrested. <laughs> um, it's rubbish, mate. Uh, the next one you picked, however, ah. was cracking. Yes. So this, this is the Glashäuter original. So uh, panorama, date with a dial. Uh, yeah. It comes in a variety of different colors. This is the uh, kind of crystal blue. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. It does come in a, what they call zinging yellow, which I quite appreciate. Uh, steel, nice calf skin strap. Um, only 100 watches with the zinging yellow are going to be made. 11,500 pounds. But I love it. Well done, yeah. GQ. Well done, Stuart. This is very yes. good. Absolutely. Yeah, get back to the 1970s with you, but this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, not many being made. Is it 100? Um, just shy of probably £12,000 when she could have get it to your good self. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, once you get it delivered. Superb quality. Very lovely traditional de design. I love the miniature dial features as well. Um, yeah. it's, it's just a lovely, lovely watch. You can imagine yourself wearing this, uh, having a bathtub gin in the summer. It's do you know at what? an event, not just drinking in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, 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 with it on. It. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not going to be able to go anywhere if you spent like eleven and a half grand on a watch. That's true. Um, I'm quite liking these kind of um, these Pan America, Pan like squarey type watch faces that seem to be from the seventies that are coming back. Um, mm. I'd be surprised if I don't finish 2022 with a a watch of this style um my we'll, we'll go back to our good friends at cartel do you know what i was just about to say that i was going to yeah. say do you know what at the moment i've got i'm between two sorry glass hoiter you're too expensive um it's between the amalgam amalgato uh pan america they come in a variety mm. of colors they're just shy of 500 quid they look amazing and they're a proper motorsport brand but then the guys at cartel was it the sinclair uh, oh, that does ring a bell. Yeah. Um, either way, it, I mean, I might end up getting both. Might have a really good year. Uh, but absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Great choice here. Pity about the price, but I only mean that because I can't get one. Um, <laughs> I think it's probably worth the eleven and a half grand. And we finish with oh. Marlowe. You uh, know what? The this Bonneville. is probably yeah. This is probably my watch of the year last year for tiktok and that's a bold thing to say Where? um but beautiful marlow watch company now based in kinross in scotland had no real kind of emphasis on why i picked this harking back to the sir malcolm campbell breaking the 300 miles per hour speed record in 1935 make no bones about it i want this it's no stranger to the pod it's groundhog day again check it out absolutely beautiful there are only four left when I checked it earlier oh, today. Oh, flip, don't tell me that. All right, uh, yeah, don't get this watch, people. It's a load of rubbish. <laughs> there are only Fall four apart as soon as you look left. at it. There are only four <laughs> There are only four left on the internet website uh, for Marlowe. Uh, there are, they're, they're good value, just shy of 300 quid, wasn't it? Or was it something like that? Uh, um, um, yeah, I think it was three, 300, 350. Yeah. Um, Ballpark, yeah. Wow, watch of, your, watch of your year last year. Uh, I agree. I think that uh, they're not my watch of the year for last year. Because I can't pick one. Um, lovely, lovely watch. And I'm really happy to see them both as a brand and that they pick this watch, particularly this model, particularly to go in that long list at GQ. Really proud that we featured them on TikTok last year and really happy for them to see them on that list yeah. for this year. Uh, interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? But make sure that you do subscribe to Is It Fast because TikTok, where we talk about ticks, um, is is going to be a huge part of the year this year. If you're into your watches, your timepieces, your wrist adorned lovelies, uh, then make sure that you do subscribe to Is It Fast to Is It Fast this year because we're going to be talking and showing lots of watches, but also watch buying experiences as well. It's going to be. Uh, a very good year for watch fans, uh, if I must say so myself. And, Indeed. And, <laughs> and I do. Uh, now, as we are heading into a year of uh, very exciting motorsport, we've already touched on the Dakar, so make sure you watch this, but there's a lot more happening this year. So <clears throat> in 2022, here are some very important Dates for your diary if you're into motorsport. Uh, we shall start with F1. Now, we already know that there was a little bit of <laughs> controversy last year for the 2021 title. You don't have to wait long for the F1 to start again in Bahrain. 
The Grand Prix will be on the 20th of March, 2022. It will be featuring a host of new drivers, drivers that have swapped seats, and a brand new F1 car that will look something like that. It's got, uh, they're smaller, they're thinner. It promises more overtaking because of the aero. It's going to be cool, isn't it? It's going to be super exciting. Yeah, new cars again for it. The design's absolutely stunning. I'm not quite sure about the paint job on the one that we're showing right now. Hmm. Max back to try and retain his crown. There was a little bit of conversation about will Lewis return or not. But Max has apparently broken his ankle. Oh, has he? Oh. Over Christmas. Uh, apparently, he won't be in the first race of the season. So, oh, I, yes. did, I did not know that. I don't know if I it's true or not. That? No. Uh, Twitter, mate. <laughs> no, that's true, yeah. Sorry. We don't, yeah, no, Lewis, he's definitely going to come back and fight for he's, it. He's definitely going to come back. There, there, there was a little bit of conversation. Oh, he's deleted all his Twitter followers. Oh, I said, oh will he be back? He'll be back. Of course he's he going to go for number eight. He of course he it. is. Yeah, he does. I think he does, actually. And that's speaking as a uh, Schumacher fan. So there we go. The mm-hmm. F1 2022. Put this date in your diary. The F1 itself, the actual race, 20th of March. Uh, now, if F1 is to your liking, but petrol isn't, the next date for your diary is Formula E. The Formula E comes back for the eighth start, eighth season. Starts in Diria, which is Saudi Arabia. Uh, end of January, the 28th of January is when you can start watching Formula E again. Uh, the Formula E, of course, is the all-electric Formula series. Uh, we have Nick de Vries is the reigning champion of Formula E. Uh, it's taking in cities all over the world, huge cities, Interestingly for me, they're going to Jakarta and Seoul this year, uh, mm. which will be interesting. Uh, and so we've got uh, we've got that, which is quite interesting. I know a lot of people that aren't into Formula E, but I, for one, nearly always watch the London E Prix. Yeah, it, uh, it was a real shame cool. that the 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 London Formula E race this year was without mm. fans. Yeah, really loved watching it on the TV, and I hope this series continues to grow. Yes, me too. I'm 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 quite a big fan. Um, in London, it's at the Excel, isn't it? And that's a yeah. that's a cool venue. Um, but very interested to see because they're doing a lot of street circuits with this, and I think that's really interesting. Uh, so interested to see the Soul E Prix. That's going to be very very cool. Mm. Sticking with the all electric theme. Uh, Extreme E is coming back for its second season. Uh, The Extreme E Championship, which is the all-electric off-road championship, takes motorsport to far-flung corners of the world, primarily to areas that need uh, to be in the public eye as a result of climate change and raising awareness of climate change issues while simultaneously racing in some of the most incredible machines in the world. Uh, the date for your diary, February 19th and 20th, Extreme E starts, and it starts in a place called Neom in Saudi Arabia. Now, if you haven't heard of the Neom project, this is something I'm a little bit obsessed with at the moment. This is a $500 billion city being made in Saudi Arabia that is going it to be like a, a city... big padlock. It does look like a big padlock, but it is being made... Uh, on the coasts of Saudi Arabia, opposite the Egyptian uh, resort of Sharm el-Sheikh, just to give you some geography in the world. Uh, if you've ever been to Sharm el-Sheikh, you can see over the... Uh, over, I can't remember what the sea is called, but you can see over the water and it's going to be there. Uh, an incredible futuristic city made and developed around people and well-being and all the other things that we attribute with Saudi Arabia. Because uh, <laughs> obviously, as a, as a country, it's well known for putting its people first. Uh, but it's interesting. It's, oh, I nearly made it through the whole first oh. show of the year. Uh, well, but it's re- good news is I get to go and cover it this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I'm not going to get my visa. Uh, but very interesting project. Do type the Neom project into Google because it's well yeah. worth it. Dates for your diary there, 90 19th and 20th of February. Whoa. What I've got to say, the Extreme E sanctioned international off-road racing series across the world. Crazy. Did right? you say more? That's that's awesome. It just I sounds know. brilliant. And it is cool because we've got lots of F1 stars uh, taking place uh, or kind of involved in it. So 
um, and lots of racing stars from around the world. So Rosberg, Nico Rosberg's team won it this year. Lewis Hamilton's team, X44, are involved. You've got Sebastian Loeb t- is involved in one shape or another, Jensen Button. So it's all... Got like, to help the brand. You, yeah. yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Um, if you're not interested in racing on land, the XCAT, UIM XCAT World Championship will be back in 2022 in Q1. There are dates running around, but they are not been solidified yet. Um, but it is the premier championship that takes place on water uh make sure that you tune in to the x cat probably in march i will give you that um but make sure that you tune in to that uh, i shan't labor the point just <laughs> amazing zoomy boats really hoping for a full calendar of racing this year i just really just hope they get a better presenter this time round. <laughs> uh, a better that. presenter what oh Oh, this last, is awkward. This is yeah. awkward. Uh, yeah. If you are into your ex cat, this is a little bit of what it looked like last year. The X Cat World Championship has arrived right here in Dubai. That's right, the city of glass and dreams is playing host to this season's grand finale. The championship race is truly on, and the city that gave us the Burj Khalifa is going to give us an ex-cat champion. Better presenter. Well, I was just so lucky you had that just ready to go. What the queued odds? up and ready to go. Oh, what are the odds? Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Yes, water sports there for everybody. Uh, touring cars. So one of my favourite uh, formats. Uh, date for your diary, TCR, Touring Car Racing. Oh, there's another presenter. There he is. I look a bit worried in that photo. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what was going on. Frozen. I do look frozen. Your uh, mum will not be happy. You've not got it, a hat on. <laughs> it was very cold that day. Um, TCR UK starts on the 18th of April at Alton Park. Uh, it is supporting TCR UK is supporting the British GT Championship for the first couple of rounds and then takes off around uh, the UK, mainly England, I'll be honest. Uh, we have got uh, a number of very cool entrants this year. TCR is a hugely incredible uh, touring car championship around the world. So make sure you tune in from the 18th of April for TCR UK. It's going TCR to be TCR is the future. It is the it is the future. I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Uh, but if TCR isn't enough touring car action for you, the return. I'm just sticking photos of myself in everywhere. Uh, the the return. I think there's a picture of me next to that very car. You've still not used it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> The British Touring Car Championship, because I knew you'd make a quip about my presenting. Uh, the British <laughs> Touring Car Championship is coming back. Uh, the first race day is the 24th of April at Donington Park Circuit. Uh, make sure that you tune in live uh, to ITV4, which is what the Touring Car Championship is exclusively, British Touring Car Championship is exclusively shown on. Uh, if you Make sure you do subscribe to Is It Fast. I'm sure I'll be standing, or other Stu will be standing next to touring cars up and down the land. Uh, but make sure that you stick that date in your diary. 2022 racing championships on land and on water that you should be looking out for. Not to mention championships that are taking part in the sky that we will share more information with you later in the year make sure you do subscribe to is it fast on your social media platform of choice to catch all of our exclusive and exciting news about that <laughs> and silence <laughs> you've got nothing to say now have you <laughs> i was still trying to find the where's wally in the last picture i was really struggling <laughs> yeah yeah and for those of you listening that was me standing next to a touring car uh twice looking smug uh because i love touring cars i really really do you do you do i do i do i do uh uh, yeah it actually weirdly does 
Uh, so we finish this week, as we always do, with news from the weird and wonderful. Uh, so news this week that... Uh, now, if you're unaware of Finland and Finnish people, all you need to know is Finland is the country <laughs> that gave us the band Lordy. And that kind of gives you a good idea. Now, I've met lots of Finnish people in my life. I've been very lucky to meet a lots of Finns. Uh, and they're all lovely, but they're all a little bit off kilter. Uh, so the news this week that a man in Finland was unhappy with his Tesla and he blew it up. So if you're watching, you're yeah. about to watch this. This is a Tesla Model S? Yes. Boom! <laughs> well, it was. A Model S. Why did he blow it up? Uh, well, simply put, he was given quite a large uh, repair bill uh, with due to a failed battery, uh, and he was faced with a repair bill of a whopping, I say it's whopping because it really is, £17,000 repair bill. Um, I believe that this is uh, a Tesla warranty will cover a battery replacements if the capacity drops below 70 uh, percent within 150,000 miles or within eight years of purchase. Unfortunately, um, for Tomas Kat Katting, um, uh, it was nine years old, his car. Um, and instead of kind of paying the extremely large bill, he just decided to blow it the flip up. Fair um, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, 60 pounds of dynamite was used to blow this Tesla up, apparently. Yeah, uh, yeah 17 grand. Uh, yeah, Thomas Katten Katainen. I'm not very good with, with Finnish names, yeah. I'm sorry. Tom Katainen. Um, yeah. yeah, I or mean, and he decided to his pals. He cat to his pals. Uh, decided to blow up his Tesla, Tesla S. Yeah. Uh, I, it's had a lot of views on YouTube. I imagine he might have made his money back. Um, but imagine being that angry. You know, you take your Ford Focus down to your MOT center and they want to charge you 100 quid to change something over and you just go, nah, sod it. I'll blow it up. Yeah. It's a wee bit extreme. But there you have it. A Finnish um, guy has blown up his Tesla. This is my second favorite Finnish person of all time after Mixu Pat Leinen. Um I don't really want to be the guy to tell him that an um, uh, 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 internal combustion engine car actually might also need a new battery, or he might even need to put petrol in it. <laughs> yeah. um, but with yeah. service costs like this, no wonder Mr. Musk is a trillionaire. Um, mm. Yeah, the, quite expensive for a brand new battery. Apparently, you can get replacement batteries for a Tesla that aren't from Tesla for like less than half the price, like 5000 dollars or something yeah but to blow your tesla up like this is well, quite extreme but he must how have been much quite angry did he spend on his tesla model s in 2012 <laughs> yeah because you, you don't really want to be faced with a i don't think he bought 17... it new i don't think he bought it new oh did he not buy it new i okay. don't know i don't think so i didn't do an awful mm. lot of research into it but i don't think he bought it new so <sighs> It'll be interesting to see, though, as kind of electric cars obviously become more prominent on our roads and things like that. Uh, will these kind of bills or service costs start to become a little bit more? Um, Who knows? Um, obvious. I don't know. Uh, we might just have nothing but craters where people are blowing up their cars up in the streets in the in the country. That'd be interesting. We 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 may well do. But there but there we go. And just a quick hello to Ro, who's who's in there in the comments asking how we are. We're fine. Thank you, Ro. Thanks. For, hey, Ro. Thanks for th tuning in, mate. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for commenting. Hope you're well. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we we finished this week uh, on the news that uh, <laughs> that Finn Thomas Kaitanen uh, exploded his model tesla s rather than paying the seventeen thousand pound replacement fee for a new battery uh, a bit extreme but i imagine point made given that it is now being talked about all over the world bit extreme but there we have it and that does bring to a close our very first show of 2022 thank you very very much for being with us for the first show of the year make sure that you do follow us and subscribe on your social media platform of choice to make sure you don't miss a single bit of news reviews motorsport articles and reviews 
from Is It Fast throughout the course of this year, because I can tell you now it is going to be quite the busy year. Make sure you do also subscribe to our podcast on your podcast distributor of choice as we bring you this program every single week recorded and distributed live for our sins. Thank you, as always, to Stu for being with us. Uh, Stu, who is unfortunately now under contract for the rest of 2022. Mm. Uh, I know it's going to be a horrendous slog for you, mate, but I promise you it'll be well worth everybody it's, else's it's the listeners I, It's the listeners I feel sorry for. I know it's pretty oh, bad, man. right? But yeah. until <laughs> until next week, <laughs> 7 o'clock sharp, GMT, thank you very much for being with us. Have a lovely, safe week, and we shall catch you same time, same place. Until next time, ta-ta.